Hi, welcome to Huddersfield New College. Uh, with you having a look at this video, hopefully you're interested in A-level biology. So what we're going to do today is have a look at what an A-level biology lesson would transpire as. So looking back at your journey already at school, you would have probably remembered doing an experiment like this where you go and have a look at chromatography. So in year eight, you'd be doing chromatography and you'll be separating colours um, in your pens and you'll be having a look at what colours are actually consisting in which. Then year 11, you'd take that a little bit further and you'd go and have a look at the RF value. So you'll be looking again, colour pens, but this time you're going to be calculating something we call the RF value so we can actually compare it with known values. In A-level biology, we go a little bit deeper with that. So we're still looking at the technology of chromatography where we're actually separating molecules uh, depending on size and how um, it, it travels with the uh, solvent. However, we're going to go and put a little bit more real life um, into it. So in this case, what we're going to have a look at are two samples that are actually sent into us. We have one sample of known uh, well, uh, that's got some toxicity with uh, interaction when, it, uh, when you get it into your body. However, it's cheaper and it was largely available. When we actually discovered that how it interacted with the body, it was then banned. Uh, unfortunately, there was some signs that there, the, there was creeping back into the uh, society. So we were sent two samples from two different shops to go and say they've been using the illegal sample. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the same method that you've actually learnt so far, so chromatography, but this time we're going to compare it with known samples of amino acids. And I'm pretty sure during your GCSE you would have actually learnt about the protein and how they're actually made up of the amino acids. Now, the uh, toxic sample that we have, well, we know contains both uh, methanoin and leucine. I mean, obviously it contains a lot of other um, uh, chemicals in there, but these are the two that we're actually going to focus on to go and see whether they are both present in our two samples. So, starting off, uh, you would not have had to go and wear gloves for this because obviously you're just looking at ink and pen colour and that's not going to affect anything. Now if you remember anything about biology you'll know that you've got amino acids, you'll have things that are actually on your skin and obviously around the actual area. So we're going to make sure there's no contamination of our sample. Uh, we're going to have gloves on. Safety, make sure that we have safety specs on because the sample is actually held in something we call butanol so just to go make sure that you know we're not going to go and get anything in our eyes or anything we're going to have to be safe now previously what you had to go and do you had to go and draw a line two centimeters from the bottom so that you can actually put your drops here again we've done the two centimeter line but we're actually having this at the top and the reason why we actually have this line here is not for us to go and put where the solvent's going to, our, solu our solute's going to go, where actually this is for the handling. So that if, say for example, our um, gloves were contaminated, at least we know this area is the area that it will actually just touch. No other area would be actually touched by the gloves itself. So that's what that line is for. What we need to go and do, we need to go and then make a line at the bottom one centimetre across there, and I'm going to put X and Y for my two samples that have been given to me. I'll then get a little cocktail stick, and then I'll take my sample, and we're going to go and do exactly what you've done before. Take some of that sample, and we're going to go and introduce it onto the chromatography paper, bit by bit, until we've got a good um, half a centimetre width of solution on here. So that is X. Make sure that, oops, it's uh, disposed of so that we can um, safely get rid of that. Then, we're going to take solution Y and again, make sure that we have new cocktail stick preventing um, contamination we're going to put onto our spot as such now this needs to go into our solvent that we've got put over here and then we're going to let it run we're going to go and clip this 
so that it's not touching the side of the beaker because otherwise it will ruin the um, the running of the amino acid and the substances that we actually have on there. So. There we go. And we're just going to pop it onto the that. Now, uh, once the actual solvent has actually risen up, the first thing we need to do, we need to go and mark down where the solvent front is so that we've got the solvent front traveled. And then we're going to pop it into the um, heater to go and make sure that we actually dry it out. Once we've dried it out, this is what we are expecting to see, which is nothing. The reason why is nothing. Most chemicals that we actually have actually colourless and what we need to do we need to go and develop this so at the moment with our naked eye we actually don't know how far the actual solvent or what it actually contains here what we're going to do now is we're going to go and spray the dye onto it ninhydrin ninhydrin is um, well very very strong as a stain and what we want to do is make sure none of it gets onto your skin otherwise it will stain for a good couple of weeks so we go into this booth and we want to make sure that when we spray it, it's only within this cardboard box, so we're not actually going to go and um, damage anywhere else. So we'll spray it. And then we're going to quickly pop it back into here to go and dry it out. And once we get it out, we need to go and work on the um, area. So this here is what I've done earlier as a sample of all these different um, amino acids. And as you can probably see, the area itself is actually quite large in where it comes out. So I need to go and find out where the uh, average movement is. So what I've done is I've circled the area of where the spot has actually travelled. And what I've done is uh, on the middle of it, I've literally put a dot there and that will actually be my um, movement of where my spot is to do my calculation. This here is what we've actually um, got. And I, using my measurement, using my ruler, again, the uh, unit that we need to go and focus on is millimetres. So I've used just a normal ruler. I've um, measured out the actual distance in which it moved. And let's go and do some calculation in the RF value. So my sample, sample X, as you can actually see, has actually got two sets of results here. So I need to work out the RF value up, uh, onto this one, this spot, and I also need to go and work the RF value out for uh, the spot below it. So numbers that I've got, or the distance that I've got for sample X was 40 millimetres for the highest spot, and the lowest spot was 30 millimetres. The solvent front that I said that when we go and uh, collect it out, we need to go and draw a line to actually work it out, was measured at 55 millimetres. So both of these, I'm going to put 55 millimetres down and all I'm going to do is divide it to go and work out what the RF value is. Now, 40 divided by 55 gives me an RF value of 0 0.55. Looking at this and comparing it with known values, 0.55 shows me that I do have methanoin in there. So if 30 divided by 55 is then matching with the RF value of leucine, then I think we've actually found our match of that toxic sample. So let's have a look at this. 30 divided by 55, unfortunately, does give the actual uh, value of 0.73. Therefore, I know it's matched both of what we have. And we know that sample X actually has or does contain the illegal substance that we were after. So let's have a look at um, sample Y. Even just looking at it, you can actually see it doesn't quite, it's not quite as far as it's gone. So again, doing the same calculation, measuring it out, I've got uh, Y, the highest spot, is at 36 millimeter, and the lower spot was at 21 millimeters in distance. And again, the R value doesn't change because I was using the same um, chromatography paper. So that was 55 and 55. So 55 and 55.
So, um, like I said, that doesn't actually change. So now, the RF value of sample Y, the highest spot, is 65. And for the lowest spot, it is at 0 0.38. So if we have a look at the known values that we've got, we've got 65 or 66, well, rounded up, would be my tryptophan. So that clearly isn't what we're actually after. And then um, the lower spot that we actually found was 0 0.38, and that was alanine. So all the actual um, amino acids that we were looking at, or what we actually um, measured it to, was found to be there. And we know uh, the, the shop that contained supplied sample Y was absolutely fine. And sample X is the one that needs looking after, and probably prosecuting. So that here was a very, very quick explanation of what well, an example of a biology lesson. Um, any further questions, please go into the website and have a look. Thank you.